Okay, hello people on YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to link two routers together. Um, one in particular, this is the GG834N. And I have another one. Okay, so this is the first router that I have. The Netgear DG38GT, I think it is. And as you can see on the top, there are these little um, things on the top. So you've got the RJ11 cable, that's for the internet. You have, on well on here, the configuration that I have is two uh, RJ45 uh, Ethernet leads plugging directly in, into the back of the computer and into the router to give access to the internet from that RJ11 lead plugged straight into the phone line and into the router and then that's just the power lead okay uh, I guess that takes care of that then the rest of it is all software based so that flashing one yeah that's pretty much the Ethernet cable it's the yellow one but, uh, so it fits in there hello welcome back so in the previous lesson we looked at how we can uh, use remote desktop connections uh, to log in and get some work and get some data especially from a 11 digit number to a address that can be found um, for example I typed in uh, irdp.sites.com I think it was or .org and using that address we can connect directly to the computer without having to remember this 11 digit number and it updates automatically now in this tutorial uh, we are going to look at how to connect these two routers together for increased wireless connectivity so for example this router that I have this is my first router that's connected to the internet the DG834GT this router I find really really bad at connecting wirelessly I mean man I have tried to connect this router wirelessly upstairs and it just sucks really I mean it is probably the crappiest router that I've ever worked with but never mind I understand it so I like it right a couple of things I want to point out the IP subnet mask okay this is the mask that's used to connect well to communicate two different networks together oh, sorry that came out wrong this is to make sure that the two networks can see each other let's put it that way it makes more sense or oh, in other words this is the IP subnet mask the mask associated with the internet IP address that's how Mega put it okay so that needs to be the same on both your routers otherwise it's not going to work it's, it's just going to be like hey I'm going to motorway A and I'm going to motorway B but I can't see you I just know that you're going past it's kind of like that uh, as an analogy for you okay what to do first okay what you need to do first okay ignoring the IP subnet mask for now although it is an important aspect you need to plug in the second router into your machine okay so plug it in if it's new it's fine don't worry about it just type in the address that came on the box to log in okay in my case this was 192.168.01 as follows on the, the little bar here and that allowed me to access the router use your default uh, username and password so that's been given to you look at the box instructions it should have them there to log in log in and then you'll be presented with something similar to this I'm using a Netgear router it's another one it's a DG 834N this is the Nemo edition and you'll be basically presented with a screen like this okay just go to basic settings you'll find it if you don't have it but go there and then what you want to do is does your internet connection require a login tick no you don't want that you don't need an account name or domain name that's not necessary the IP address get dynamically from the ISP and then all the settings you don't need that because it's linking 
from the first router to the second router. This is my second router. The domain name server is uh, a means in which the 11 digit IP address that we looked at in the first series is being resolved to something like vincentjewelers.co.uk or vincentjewelers.com. So that big number will be resolved into something which you can understand. Uh, another definition for it, if I can find it, let's have a look, what is this, DNS, right, okay. Okay. Here we go, DNS address. The DNS address is used to look up site addresses based on their names. If your ISP gave you one or two DNS addresses, select them primary and secondary. Okay, so another thing to note here is if you get an address not found error when you go to a website, it's likely that your DNS servers aren't set up properly. So you contact your ISP to get a DNS address. Okay, so that's DNS. Uh, NAT is Network Address Translation. That allows all LAN PCs to gain their internet access via the router by sharing their router's WAN IP address. Okay, the full thing here, the full thing I'll highlight here, being white just now. Okay. Uh, basically, it just allows the computers to connect and just to see each other via the router. That's pretty much it. You know, just dedicate one. Uh, it just allows DHCP to do its job. Okay, so uh, DHCP is the no dynamic host configuration protocol. Let me just check that I got that correct. Um, let's see, where can I find it from? I think it's ADSL settings. Nope. Leave that so ADSL settings the same. Let's go to wireless. It's not in there, but okay, I'll do it step by step. Okay, the SSID can be changed. You don't need to worry about it. It's just a name that's given to the router. In this case, for me, this is Netgear. Okay, and make sure that you have a separate uh, network key. This can be a real pain to set up next time. So I fully recommend to just change your uh, WPA key on the second router, you know, just as an extra security enhancement, so that way uh, it's not taken by uh, anybody else, it's just there. Okay, let's see, what else can we do? Um, do, 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 do. Let's go to WAN setup. That's all fine, don't worry about the WAN setup. None IP addresses. Okay, yeah. This is what I was talking about. Okay, your IP address. Uh, initially, for mine, th for this router, the second router, this was it was this, 192.168.0.1. Now the problem with this is that it conflicts with the first router. The first router also has this IP address. Now, if two routers have the same IP address, essentially they're going to conflict with each other. Okay, and the computer is going to go nuts trying to understand which one is which. So to avoid this problem, what I did was on the second router I initiated the address of 20. So that way, that avoids all that avoids conflict with any other device that's been addressed in the network. So if I have twenty devices, so yeah, if I had twenty devices on the network, then uh, this number will change from one to twenty-one. Okay, because the first address is always for the router. Uh, for some reason, it, it just normally is. Okay, then any other number after that IP address. Okay. 192.168.0.1 would be a device that is connected to that router. That's assuming that DHCP is on. Okay, and this usually ranges up to 254 addresses per router. Okay, the IP subnet mask makes sure it's the same on both routers, otherwise, they're not going to communicate with each other efficiently. Uh, there could be a lot of mix-up, although it is possible, especially with Cisco routers, to connect two different subnet masks together. Uh, it would be easier if they were just the same. Uh, more definition about an IP subnet mask would be uh, from Netgear. The subnet mask specifies the, num the network number portion of an IP address. Your router will automatically calculate the net subnet mask based on the IP addresses that you have assigned. Unless you are implementing subnetting using 255.255.255.0 as a subnet mask computed by the router.
Okay, leave all the other settings the same. That's really important as aspect that we need to have. Okay, on the second router, don't worry about this use router as DHCP server. Just untick it. You don't need it. It's as simple as that. And I think we're good to go. Let's just check the other settings. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine as well. Okay. Now that the second router has been set up, go back to your first router. Okay, make sure that you apply all the settings in the second router. I did forget to mention that. Then in the first router, what you need to do is just simply leave all the settings the same. And then for the LAN IP, just type my password in here. Make sure that use router as ZHCP server is enabled. The IP subnet mask the same. The IP address as the default. And then the address reservation. Okay, just click on add. <laughs> okay, click on add initially. And then hopefully it will be found. Now, oh, here we go. As an IP address to be reserved. So, what this means is that when you reserve this address, that no other address can be assigned that has that IP address. So 192.168.0.20, that would be for the second router, cannot be assigned to any other device on the network that's connected, okay? No matter if it's from the second or if it's from the first. Okay, so now to make this visible in the for the first router, so how I got this to be visible was that on this motherboard that I have, okay, this is an ASICS, sorry, ASUS P6X58D premium motherboard. It has two uh, Ethernet ports on the back, two NICs built into the motherboard. Uh, NIC stands for Network Interface Controller, I believe. Let's just double check that. Or network interface cards, I think is the correct term. Yeah, there we go, network interface cards. It has two network interface cards that have been bridged together. So the way that I did that was by going to the start menu and then I clicked on, then I typed in network. <laughs> I haven't really typed in network there, but never mind. And then I clicked on view network status and then click on change the adapter settings and then you will see if you have two network interfaces together okay one has to have the internet connected to it so make sure that it has internet on it it's good to go you know you can log in internet is hunky dory the second one make sure that there is no internet on it but there is an ethernet cable from from the second router to the uh, network card or the onboard uh, NICs on your motherboard make sure that it's connected and enabled then all you have to do is to highlight over them or press shift on one press shift on press shift for the other just hover over it then left click and then bridge the connections. I already have them bridged, so it's telling me to remove them. But usually you will have something here called bridge connections. And then once the network bridge has been established, you will have a little icon here called network bridge, network Mac bridge, mini port in this case. Click on this and you will have the basic information about your network connected directly. Okay, so that's pretty much how we how it's done. Uh, for this setup, I've just gone into properties and then clicked on the Internet Protocol version 4, properties, and I've assigned a static IP address for this where the DNS uh, server is the uh, first server 
and it's also the, also the default gateway. Okay, and then when you get this warning, just click uh, yes, and uh, that should do it. Should be good to go. Okay, and you should be able to connect this with uh, devices such as the Android devices. Android devices. Uh, I just tested it with the Samsung Galaxy Ace, and it seemed to work absolutely fine. I got about eight megs on it as opposed to 2 megs on the first router that I have. Uh, I can connect it with the upstairs laptop. I've got a laptop upstairs and it works just beautifully on that. I mean you can uh, do HD movies. Um, at the moment I'm still trying to understand how it works with the PlayStation 3. Uh, I have a li I've had limited success with it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to make it work to uh, another application of this would be that you can have HD movies going down into your PlayStation uh, using PS3 Media Center, which is this program here. Media... Where is it? There we go. PS3 Media Server. At the moment, my PlayStation's off, so you won't find anything. Okay? But you can hook it up with this, and it will work. It should work pretty smoothly. Uh, I might do a tutorial on this one day, but uh, that's for later date. But uh, in general, it should allow you to do just that. Just connect it, should be fine, no problem. If there's any problems, I'll try and help you the best way I can. But uh, this tutorial is generally for Netgear. If you have a Netgear, then you're in luck. But if you don't, uh, there might be some uh, options which are similar which you can try and um, they should allow you to, to uh, link both routers together but generally if you're in a Windows platform, I'm using Windows 7 then uh, that's usually the norm, the easiest way to do it really. um, if you have IP conflicts then a good way to get rid of them would be CMD then type in IP config slash release and that will release the IP. Th yes, yes, that will release the IP from the device that you are connecting with. So that's the computer in this case. But you will get a message saying that it's been released or not. And another one would be renew, IP config dash renew, and that renews the IP address. Basically, what it's saying is that okay, that IP address has been released, so it's gone. It's gone back into the reservation pool of the router and then by saying renew we're getting a new IP address saying that hey look you know I'm free give me one and uh, that's what happens okay so I hope that's guided you and uh, I hope to see you again soon thanks for watching